Between the beaches, rivers and waterfront communities, Hampton Roads is defined by its connection to the water, but there's a deeper story below the surface. Tonight, 13 News now kicks off a special series about the environmental troubles of the Chesapeake Bay and why conservation efforts were never more important. Alex Littlehales reports on the efforts to save the bay. By land and by water, it defines a culture and way of life in America's mid-Atlantic. Welcome to the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary in the United States. So in a lot of cases, I think most people have their fondest memories somewhere along a shoreline or in a boat uh, along the bay. It's a perfect day for the water, and Captain Christopher Moore feels at home behind the throttle. Its beauty is clear, even if its future is less so. Every two years, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation publishes the State of the Bay, a snapshot report of the overall environmental conditions in the bay. Thirteen different environmental factors contribute to the bay's grade, and in 2020, the bay received a D plus with an overall score of 32. You know, a D plus uh, kind of signifies the fact that we're improving, but we're still kind of dangerously out of bounds. There are nearly 18 million people who live along and are impacted by the Bay's watershed, including hundreds of thousands of people in Hampton Roads. They may not realize many environmental conditions are considered failing or close to it, like levels of pollutants, nitrogen and phosphorus. We tend to have way too much nitrogen and phosphorus in sediment, basically in our, in our waterways. And so that creates cloudy conditions during the summertime. It creates a failing water quality grade too. And it's not just about the water itself, but what lives underneath. So to help clear our waterways up in terms of eating some of that excess pollution, uh, but creating also spaces for other animals to live as well. Oysters are also considered failing, which is why they've spent years trying to restore the population. The common number that's used out there is that a three inch oyster, which this one here is about three inches long, can filter about 50 gallons a day during the summertime. Because a cleaner bay is the ultimate goal, scientists like Moore are working towards. Enter the Chesapeake Clean Water Blueprint, an agreement between six states and Washington, D.C. to set pollution limits and a roadmap for a cleaner bay by the year 2025. We're already beginning to see the influences of our effort. Progress has been made, but slowly. In 22 years, the bay's grade is only five points higher than the report published in 1998. So a D-plus grade in 2020 and a target score of 40 only serves as a reminder that the 2025 deadline is fast approaching. It's unclear what the effects will be if the Chesapeake Bay's environmental grade doesn't reach that goal. But the worry is that any efforts to save it afterwards would be too little, too late. And so we don't want to get to a point in bay restoration where the, the bay is so degraded that we, it is so expensive and, and, and so hard to do that uh, people, people do write it off. In 2020, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation sued the EPA to ensure the enforcement of the clean water blueprint. The rest of our Saving the Bay series airs tomorrow and Friday at 6 o'clock.